probably just hit puberty in a day when somebody saved a baby seal. <laughs> Six foot nine. Isn't that exciting? Look what I did, everybody. Look how big I got. People ask me about a growth spurt. I don't think I had a growth spurt. I think spurt implies a short period of time. I did not enjoy a short period of growth. I went from five foot six to six foot nine in about a year. Yes, it wasn't a spurt, it was more of an ooze. I was like, oh my bones. <laughs> For a year. And my grandmother tried to be all cute about it. She would say things like, oh, when you're growing, that's just mother nature hitting you with her growing stick. <laughs> okay, mother nature has a weapon and she's assaulting me with it and forcing me to grow. What a fun colloquial phrase, grandma. And I thought about it and it actually makes sense. I looked it up, people are taller now than people have ever been. And I think it's fair to say we've been pretty disrespectful to mother nature, so <laughs> maybe that's a coincidence or maybe that's just mother nature getting her licks in when she can, right? Just letting off a little steam. <laughs> All I'm saying is if you're a short guy, don't sweat it, man. You probably just hit puberty in a day when somebody saved a baby seal. <laughs> Not me. I must have hit on a day when there was an oil spill or something. Just, she just beat me like I invented fossil fuels, you know? <laughs> gonna be six foot nine by the time I'm done with you. And I was like, oh, will I be good at basketball? And she's like, oh, you're gonna be terrible at it. And she just, <laughs> she went for the knees, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I have something happening to me recently. I don't understand where it's coming from, but a lot of people keep asking me what kind of white person I am. It's innocent. They're like, well, you're big. That must be Scandinavian. You got a red beard. What is that? Is that Irish? And truthfully, I don't know. And they hate that. They're like, man, you got to get tested. You got to get that DNA test done. And I'm like, no, no, no. I know what kind of white person I am. I am white, but I am not white enough to pay $100 to find out <laughs> what type of white person I am. It's, that's me. It's interesting being a comedian nowadays, because a lot of people will give you feedback. They'll tell you when they don't like a joke, they can find you online. A lot of my, my comedian friends, they hate that. They're like, oh man, I hate the feedback. Not me though, right? I enjoy it. The other day, someone told me, oh, I don't think you should do, I had a joke about sweatshop workers. They're like, I don't think you should do a joke about sweatshop workers, because you don't even know what it's like to be a sweatshop worker. And I was like, actually, I've walked a lot of miles in their shoes. <laughs> So now I have a better joke about sweatshop workers. <laughs> the feedback helps. <laughs> Everyone in my family is uh, kind of funny. My dad loves pranks, that's like his favorite, but he was never very good at pranks. I remember my older brother had his first loose tooth. My dad tied a string from his loose tooth to the kitchen doorknob. So my brother and I figured, okay, he's gonna slam the door. That's gonna remove the tooth. We focused on the door, but that was just misdirection. My dad lit a match and waved it by my brother's face. So he jumped and jerked his face away and ripped that tooth out of his mouth. <laughs> It's not really a prank, Dad. <laughs> I think you just combined fire and dentistry. Right? <laughs> My dad's a big guy. He's actually much bigger than me. He's huge. He, uh, he lives off the coast of Washington State. Doesn't do any social media or the internet. I kind of love it. My dad just loves salmon fishing, berry picking, and naps. Whoa. I know, he might be a grizzly bear. <laughs> When he would yell at me as a kid, I just played dead. It usually worked. 
He loves berry picking. I don't know anyone else. He likes to go out in the woods by himself and pick a bunch of berries, which I, I'm cool with, but I'm like, man, when you go out there, you better keep your shirt on because some nearsighted trophy hunter is going to bag you, tag you, and mount you in his living room as bare as the day as you were born. <laughs> I just like the idea of some crazy trophy hunter like, oh, check out my collection, everyone. A beaver I shot in British Columbia, a mountain lion I shot in Montana, and now for the crown jewel of my collection, a grizzly bear with alopecia. <laughs> I shot him in a berry patch. <laughs> yeah. I was a tough kid to raise. I only ever got spanked one time, because the first time my dad spanked us, he spanked me and my older brother. And when he spanked my older brother, my older brother just broke down, and he did that little kid ugly foghorn cry. You know that one, where they just lose it, like And they get to the high point, and they run out of breath, but they've never run out of breath before, so they think they're dying, like and it's funny now, <laughs> but at that time it was horrible. I'm like, oh man, that's, that's, our, that's our dad. He's the man of the house. We need him to respect us. Even the family dog didn't respect my brother after that. He was sitting there like, man, that was tough for me to watch and I couldn't even see it in color, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I saw that and I thought, Travis, no matter what happens here, don't cry. You're gonna get spanked, but don't cry. And my dad spanked me and I didn't cry but I did look back and smile at him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think my little brain was like, well, oh, just look back and give him a cool, confident smile. Just let him know, no tears up here, Papa Bear, dry eyes, right? I know the older son cried, perhaps a promotion is in order. <laughs> That's how my little brain worked, but in real life, I just turned around on my poor dad like a freaky little weirdo, like, ha, 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 ha. What seems to be the problem, officer? <laughs> oh. Poor guy. He just walked right in the other room like, honey, we uh, can't spank that one again. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think you liked it. <laughs> It worked out though, man. My dad would never spank me again. And he also never hugged me. <laughs> I, uh, I turned 30 recently. I'm 30 years old. And I love being 30, which I realize you have to say, because if you complain about getting 30, younger people get sad. <laughs> like, oh, he's almost at the end. Look at him. <laughs> And older people get angry. They're like, shut up, you're a baby. <laughs> I'm not a baby, I'm 30. You just wish I was a baby so you could be 53 again. <laughs> oh, whatever, age is just a number. Like, yeah, everything is a number. L math is the language of the universe, and the universe says you're 83, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> like being 30. I want to be old, man. I've always thought I'd make a good old person. Everyone tells me I'm like an old soul, which I think they just are trying to tell me I'm bad at parties and to stop coming back. But, <laughs> but I'm always like, I, I kind of dug it. You know, it'd be cool to be old. You just, you know, you, you sit back, you relax, you complain about things, you eat jello. <laughs> like, it just seems, but I keep reading the news and I'm feeling like it's not going to be as good when I get to that age. I saw a headline that said, 40 is the new 30. And then I saw one that said 50 is the new 30. I saw a headline that said 60 is the new 30. I was like, man, I gotta be 30 for 30 years? <laughs> That's a lot of 30. And I, to be honest with you, I, 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 I keep reading these things and it seems like old people are getting less chill. They're getting more intense. I saw 100-year-old man wins 100-meter dash. What was he sprinting against? Time itself? 80-year-old <laughs> woman sets a record for a marathon. It's like, what is she running from? She's outlived all her natural predators at this point, right? 
I go to a gym, the buffest guy at my gym is the oldest man in my gym. And I kind of respect that. That guy's just always working. And I think it's because when the Grim Reaper comes for him, he's putting that thing through a wall. Just <laughs> invincible. But I always wanted to live in a retirement home. And I know that's a weird thing to say, but it seemed like it would be cool. Because you get to live your whole life, and then you move into almost like a dorm with a bunch of people your age, and you just get to hang out and share stories of all the cool stuff you did. And then I realized, if I ever live in a retirement home, it's gonna be with people my age. I'm gonna have to live with a bunch of social media influencers and hipsters, and I like you guys now, but at 90, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can live with 18 dudes named Braden. <laughs> you know how many podcasts I'd have to do every day? Just intense. I'm worried they're gonna try to be like ironically old with it. That's gonna annoy me. Just taking selfies of the meat and kale pudding. <laughs> Wearing ironic t-shirts that say things like hashtag wrinkle swag. <laughs> you know? Skinny jeans pulled up to their armpits. You know what I'm talking about. And we'll still have online dating because our generation is addicted to it, but they're probably, at some point they're gonna kick us off because we'll be too old and they'll make us older, sadder version of it. It won't be called Tinder, they'll call it something like Fizzle. <laughs> and you know who's using it because all our thumbs will be destroyed from a lifetime of swiping right and left. And anytime someone swipes, it's ah! Oh! Ow! I should stop swiping left, but he says he's six feet tall and not with that osteoporosis he's not. <laughs> I, uh, I'm 30, which means you gotta start thinking about if you're successful. Am I a successful comedian? Interesting question. In this, in this country, we tend to think success is you're the best guy or you're nobody. That's just how it works. I learned that in middle school. We had a poster in the gym locker room. It was a quote from Wayne Gretzky. It said, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. I thought that was mean to put up there. Why do you gotta compare me to Wayne Gretzky? He's the best hockey player of all time. Can I be one of his teammates? You know what their motto was? Pass the puck to Gretzky. <laughs> He's very good at this. <laughs> Just seems unfair, man. Seems unfair. Everyone else in my family's married. People starting to have kids. I can see myself getting married. I don't know about kids. I like kids, but Man, I just don't have a lot of good interactions with kids because I see kids when I'm traveling. When I'm traveling, I'm too tired to think. I let my gut make my decisions and my gut does not make very good decisions. I was going through the airport recently and I was going around a corner. It was like really early in the morning. I was just out of it. And this little kid came screaming around the corner and I saw him. So I kind of, I, you know, gut instinctively froze. I didn't want to run into him. And then he develops, I don't know, a lifelong fear of tall people's knees. <laughs> So I froze, and he saw me, and then he froze. So I was froze, he was frozen, and we just stayed that way until his parents walked around, and I had to look up, and I, just, I was like, I wasn't gonna kick him. <laughs> and they're like, what? So I'm like, well, it, it kinda, I wasn't gonna kick a kid. <laughs> God, that was weird. And then I got to my airplane, and I was getting on the airplane. I'm like, well, at least, at least that's over with. And I got to the airplane, and they're in first class. Dad's by the window. Kids in the middle aisle, and then over across the aisle is his mom. And, and I got on, and the kid saw me, and he, he stood up, and he said, Look, Dad, the bad man. <laughs> now, I don't have a long list of things I don't like children to scream about me in public, but look, the bad man, that's number one. <laughs> that's, and no one laughed. Like, no one was like, ha, ha, kids will say the darndest things. <laughs> no, everyone just stared at me like, I'm not sure what happened, but I believe the child. <laughs> And again, like, brain's dead, gotta go with the gut. I was like, uh, I don't know why, I high-fived his mom? I don't know why she high-fived me, I threw her a high-five. And I looked at the kid and said, she's my mom now. And I just, I just kept walking. And he started to cry, but like, that's, that did suck for first class. I was in the back of the plane, so I got to walk back there like an economy class hero, you know, just. Oh, man, I just, I don't have that parental instinct. They say everyone has it. They say if you hear a baby crying, you're instinctively gonna try to help that baby. They say dogs will do that too. Even dogs have been around us long enough. A dog will try to help a crying baby. I don't have that. I was at my friend's place and his baby started to cry and I was just like, well, I think we could put it outside for a while. <laughs> the dog will take care of it. I've read about this. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I, uh, 
I am I, I am single, which is uh, eh, I, I don't I don't mind it. I my ex girlfriend was great. She uh, I found out she was legally blind. She didn't want to tell me that because she thought I would make fun of her, uh, uh, I would make fun of her about it, which that's what we're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> I found out my ex-girlfriend was legally blind, and I did. I want. It freaked me out because she just wouldn't wear her glasses all the time. And I'm like, you gotta wear your glasses. You're legally blind. So I tried to think of cute ways to remind her to wear her glasses. You know, like rearranging all the furniture in the apartment, <laughs> <laughs> playing a little indoor game of Marco Polo with her. You know, I built a little pillow fort in the corner, like Marco. And she's like, when I find you, I'm gonna kill you. I am late for work. <laughs> well, traditionally, it's Polo, isn't it? <laughs> My friends are smart. They're like, don't make fun of your girlfriend's eyesight, man. Women are sensitive about physical things. I was like, what's she gonna do? Dump me over her eyesight? And then what? Go date a tall Russian guy, a tall German guy, a tall British guy? I mean, sure, at some point, I'll run out of accents. <laughs> but until then. She's great though. She is, she is great. We, uh, I remember one time we were leaving her place and she'd been over to put her shoes on and I thought it would be funny to like sneak up behind her and give her like an exaggerated spanking. So I spanked her and then she looked back and smiled at me. <laughs> so I never hugged her again. <laughs> Sorry baby, that's how it was raised. My mother is also very funny. She's, uh, my mother's awesome. I love my mom. She's a, she's a, she's a really cool lady. She, uh, when we were growing up, she was very intense with us because, like, we were afraid of my dad. We would respect him, but she caught us kind of bad-mouthing her, disrespecting her a little bit, and she realized, like, they're going to get bigger than me fast. I got to get the fear into them. And she wouldn't spank us or put us in time out. She would just wait till her friends were over and sneak up on us and just, like, single leg take us down like an Olympic wrestler. <laughs> Just pin you and start poking in the forehead until you said uncle. And when you said uncle, she's like, I'm not your uncle, I'm your mom. It's just <laughs> an intense lady. <laughs> I love her, that's just smart. Like women have that smart, like social intelligence that guys, like I'm realizing as I get older, like we don't even realize a lot of the times that the hoops that women are jumping through. And, and if you did, it would probably blow your mind. For example, you think a man invented the man cave? No. That was a brilliant woman who said, hey husband, I took all the stuff you have I don't like and I put it in the basement. That's your cave now. Cause she knew that would trigger the caveman part of his brain that said, yeah, my cave. This is where I live. This is my, and then two months later, he's like, hey honey, who owns the rest of the house then? <laughs> brother, mother's a brilliant woman. She, she's also just cool, man. I remember my brother always beat me up. He was always bigger than me when we were growing up because he was older until the year he moved away to college and I just lifted weights and I was like, oh, I can't wait for him to come back. He came back at Christmas time and he started messing with me. I'm like, don't mess with me. I'll choke you out. He's like, no, you won't. No, you won't. So I choked him out, you know, Christmas Eve. <laughs> And I'm choking him out, we have a fun family. And he's reaching for my mom, and my mom just got in his face and said, he told you he would do it. <laughs> awesome lady. I love her to death. <laughs> my older brother is seven feet tall, and he's super dumb. <laughs> my brother is seven feet tall, and he is scared of heights. <laughs> Here's my impression of him getting out of bed every day. Just, hmm. Just gotta find somewhere to sit down and adjust. You know? Brother's ridiculous. Like I said, he was, uh, he's actually, we have the same birthday one year apart. Irish twins, kinda cool, right? My parents actually have the same birthday as well. You think that's weird? My sister had her own birthday. My brother just had a kid, shares a birthday with my sister. What I'm saying is, my family has a very strong mating season. <laughs> 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 
my brother would always, uh, he, would, he would beat me up growing up, so I had to get him back with pranks. Pranks was my move, and I would get him psychologically. My favorite prank, he worked as a lifeguard. One day I took his lifeguarding whistle, and I coated that in Novocaine. Yeah. That's what dentists use to make your mouth numb, right? So he goes to the pool the next day, tries to use his whistle, but his mouth goes numb, and he's just drooling down. Like, he looked like, look like a bulldog that smelled some peanut butter, you know? And I was sitting there laughing, like, ah, oh, this is the greatest prank I've ever pulled. It's a bummer 10 people drowned while it was happening, but this is a good... <laughs> Nobody drowned, but I thought it was the greatest prank ever, because I never told him I did that, and my brother's not the brightest guy, so I kind of figure there's a good chance my older brother just thinks, well, that's what happens with whistles sometimes. <laughs> which is an amazing little bit of knowledge for him. He was a college basketball player. I can just imagine him on the bench with his teammates and they're yelling at the referee, ref, you suck, come on, ref, what's going on? And my brother's like, no, boys, I got this. And he just stood up and said, hey, ref, what's wrong? You can't blow the whistle because your mouth got all numb from the whistle. Why's no one backing me up here? Because that's what happens with whistles sometimes. And the referee's like, yeah, you're not here on an academic scholarship, are you? <laughs> Just got a dog. I got excited. I love dogs. I went over to see his dog, and I realized when I was driving over, he didn't even tell me what kind of dog he got. I started thinking he's tall. Probably got a tall dog, like a Great Dane. That just makes sense, just growing old and getting hip dysplasia together. <laughs> just... <laughs> as a team. No, he didn't get a big one. He got himself this little tiny Yorkie puppy. Yeah, fit into the palm of his hand. The puppy was adorable. The combination was a nightmare. It's just this huge guy lumbering around holding a little puppy in front of him, freaking people out. They're like, whoa, careful, Lenny. Don't pet it too hard. Right? <laughs> a lot of John Steinbeck fans here. That's... Man, I love animals. I, I keep thinking I should probably be like a vegan or a vegetarian, but man, I never make it past breakfast, if I'm honest. You know what I had for breakfast today? I had chicken and some eggs. Like, I don't care which one came first, I'm taking the whole family out. <laughs> I'm ruthless. Chicken's one of my favorite foods. I love fried chicken. I used to live next to this place in Seattle, open till two in the morning, best fried chicken. And I would go there five times a week. I would get two thighs and a side. And I finally had to stop going, not because of my health, but be one time I went in there and it was a little late and I forgot the word thighs. So I asked the guy for a couple of hips. <laughs> yeah, he laughed in my face. He was like, <laughs> Pull that microphone close. He's like, hey, there's a guy out here just asked me for chicken hips. And I don't know if you've ever heard the sound of an entire kitchen die laughing at you. It was devastating. One guy popped out. He's like, you just want hips, man? We got elbows and knees today, too. Give me a second. I'll fry you up a chicken titty right now. I will, will make that happen for you. <laughs> Love animals. Favorite animal? Dingo. I think dingoes are unappreciated. Dingoes are a wild dog from Australia. And they didn't used to be wild, which is the crazy part. They used to be domesticated, they became wild, which is crazy because Australia's the most dangerous continent. And, you know, dogs are man's best friend. So what made that happen? And then I realized, oh, that was Australians inventing the boomerang. You know what dogs love? Fetch. You know what dogs love? Sticks. They went and made an unfetchable stick. What an insult to the canine community, you know? Those dogs are like, oh, he's throwing the stick, he's throwing the stick, he's throwing the stick, and it's gone back to him. Hey, screw you, mate. We eat babies now. <laughs> How about that? Better watch yourself, Meryl Streep. We've been disrespected into dingo hood. <laughs> I love that joke. I was telling that joke in Nevada one time at a comedy club. You never know what people are gonna get upset about. I said, dingoes are wild dogs. This lady in the second row stood up and said, no, they're not. And I was like, what? She's like, I own two as pets. And she was wearing a dingo t-shirt. And I said, okay, how are they as pets? And then she was like, mm, they're not very good. And she sat back down. <laughs> <It was> amazing. <laughs> Amazing interaction. 
I like people watching. I love people watching. My favorite people watching experience, I was in Phoenix, Arizona. I was walking into a Walmart of all places. There's a woman with a flu mask over her face like she was sick uh, and no bra on, which I thought that was fun, you know. <laughs> I thought that was a good conversation to start. I was like, man, are you feeling okay? Because you look a bit down. <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> Getting healthier. I don't know, man. Some of my friends, people are so crazy online when I'm on social media. I have this friend. I have this friend who's like a big fitness freak. And on, on Instagram, she's all about superfoods and getting in shape and being healthy and lean. And she's always bugging me about it. But then on Facebook, she's talk, She's like a, she's also uh, like a doomsday prepper. She's like, oh, well, you know, if things go south, there's going to be cannibals. And you got to be protect yourself from the can. I'm looking at the two of these and I'm like, I've already made my plan up. Uh, I, forget your superfoods. I don't want to look like the healthy option when the cannibals come, right? <laughs> I've got my plan. I'm just going to hide in a bunker in the ground and I'll pop up every once in a while. Like, by the way, you cannibals don't want to eat me. I'm full of carcinogens and gluten. <laughs> Tell you what you might like, a slice of Cindy over there. <laughs> yeah, she's hiding behind that tree. That woman is grass-fed, vegan, chock full of antioxidants. <laughs> You're going to love her. Run, Cindy! <laughs> Slam the hatch. Cindy will be fine. She runs a lot of half marathons. <laughs> I am getting like a little bit healthier. I stopped going out with my friends because those guys, they got really into like clubbing, like dance clubs. They all just got really into dancing in their 30s, which seems kind of weird. I mean, it's fun for them because they can go out and lose themselves amongst the bodies and the people and the music. But if I go, I'm just three feet above everything else. I'm out there like a chaperone. Just leave a foot for Jesus, guys. Come on, what are we? It's terrible. I love to dance too, but I'm just the wrong body proportions. My elbows are at everyone else's face level. If I bust a move, I'm busting Becky right in her glass jaw. To carry her out to the ambulance. I like it too. I like it, but I was assaulting a dance club one time. I was in there dancing, and this short woman walked up and started grinding on my kneecap. <laughs> I just had knee surgery, too. I didn't think it didn't take that well. I was like, we well, better watch your butt cheeks. You might dislocate something. Right? <laughs> I was kicking myself afterwards. Like, I'm already in physical therapy. I should have just let her destroy my knee because that's good bragging rights in physical therapy. You know? <laughs> what, what happened to your knee? Football? Not me. I lost my ACL to a pygmy that knew how to bump and grind. <laughs> Sounds better that way. I'm not a very exciting person, but I know the most exciting thing I've ever done. When I was 21 years old, I went skydiving, but I didn't go because I'm a thrill seeker or an adrenaline junkie. I went skydiving because I wanted to touch a cloud. <laughs> and I know you can't touch clouds, but here's the thing. Sometimes they kind of look like you can. <laughs> My whole life, I'm like, oh, that cloud, I bet that one's fluffy. What do you think? And my friend's like, you're stupid, man. You can't touch clouds. They're condensed water at high altitude. And I was like, yeah, probably most of them, but there's no way you've checked them all. <laughs> it's got to be a cotton candy one or two. I got to be 21. That was old enough. I got to the skydiving place. The first thing they had me do was put on a jumpsuit, but they didn't have a six foot nine jumpsuit. The one they gave me fit me like a wrestling singlet. <laughs> Just too short in the legs and the arms and very short in the torso, which that was really the problem area because it just wedged up on me. And this is my childhood dream. Now I feel like I'm flashing a landing field, you know? <laughs> but I thought to myself, you know what? It's more important than this. Let's let the embarrassment roll off our back. We're going to get a cloud today. Right? And then I got to meet my jumping instructor and he had to be strapped to my shoulders because I had never jumped before. And I think they picked the wrong guy for me. Because he was like five foot four. <laughs> I put this man on like a backpack, just one strap at a time. <laughs> Tally ho! <laughs> He's just wiggling around back there. <laughs> Little legs are waggling back and forth. And He's yelling at me to stop wiggling him. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> this, this is your whole day now. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. It looked like I was wearing a baby Bjorn. 
Except for he was much older than me. He had this big, white, bushy beard, so I just looked like the proud father of a much older man. Just piggybacking with Benjamin Button. You know? And I told myself, don't let the embarrassment hold you back, Travis. It's your dream. You're gonna touch a cloud. And then I got to meet everyone I was jumping with. And there was an 80-year-old woman in the group, which was amazing. They said she ran a marathon the week before. Now she was skydiving. She was checking stuff on her, off her bucket list or whatever. And I saw her, and she was, she was spry, and she had poofy gray hair and braces, which, kind of weird for 80. <laughs> I don't got a problem with braces, but if you make it to 80 and your teeth are still there, maybe leave them alone. <laughs> They've done their work, given retirement, you know? <laughs> but I, I went over to her and I said, you're an inspiration. I said, you're amazing. I'm so excited to be jumping with you today. And she looked at me and said, uh, how tall are you? And I told her and she said, huh, I think I just added you to my bucket list. <laughs> my childhood dream gets a little PG-13. <laughs> So we all get on the plane, and with the plane set up is as the door you jump out of, there's a staging area where you're supposed to get ready before you jump out of the plane, and they have a bench where everyone sits. Everyone sat in order of how they were going to jump. I jump last, I sit on the end by the door. Everyone else got to sit normal on the bench, but I had a man strapped to my back. <laughs> so I had to sit all spread eagle, <laughs> with little legs wrapped around me. <laughs> Little sneakers tucked up front, you know? And that didn't feel like protocol. It just felt like it was comfiest for little old him. <laughs> and by the way, we're by the door, so we're the last thing anyone gets to see before they jump out of the plane and fall dangerously towards the earth. Oh, a man wrapped around a larger man. That'll be fun to think about. <laughs> And it finally got down to the last person before me, which was that 80-year-old woman. And she got up with some gusto or moxie or whatever her generation might call that emotion. And she blew right past the staging area and decided instead to grab my face, kiss me on the mouth, and fall out of the plane backwards. <laughs> Now, I don't think you should kiss a stranger, but if you do totally fall out of a plane backwards afterwards, it changes things. I was like, was well, that James Bond's mom? That was pretty smooth. That was... And it messed with me for a second because I was sitting there like, man, I'm here to touch a cloud for a second there. It was bushy gray hair in front of me, poofy gray beard behind me. That's kind of like a cloud. Where do we draw the line? And I thought, no, you know what? I got to do this. I'm here to do it. I got to do this. And I stood up and I was looking out and there's these clouds and I'm talking to them. It's you, cloud. It's been you since childhood. And he started to panic because we did have a long orientation talk about not jumping directly into the clouds. And he's like, remember what I said? And I said, I know. But what I didn't say was, man, you just got to roll with my dreams, Grandpa Backpack. <laughs> And I picked out a cloud and I counted down. I said, three, two, one, and I jumped. And you guys, clouds are condensed water. <laughs> and condensed water at high altitude, well, that would be ice crystals. <laughs> and ice crystals at terminal velocity, oh, they're not fluffy at all. <laughs> They're sharp, they won't cut your skin, which is why they have you wear the jumpsuit. Oh wait, mine did not fit me very well. So now I'm just getting torn up, falling through this cloud. And the only thing I can picture in my mind is my 80 year old makeout session at 10,000 feet. I think it's very much, my name is Travis Nelson. I appreciate you guys coming to see the show.